Tens of thousands of Australian and New Zealand investors have made their fortunes by investing in Ron Briley's companies, which have been showing exponential growth in earnings for 20 years. That growth has been produced by diversification and astute share market plays. Tonight, Ron Briley joins me in the studio. Thanks for joining us. Mr. Briley, if I could ask you, first of all, the intense buying of media stocks in recent months has seen that the share market overheat in this country. In the absence of that buying, what do you see or how do you see the market performing? Well, I think the market would have been um, fairly buoyant. Uh, share markets around the world have been, and the Australian market was um, pretty firm even before the media activity. But certainly the media activity has given it um, added emphasis. Because of that, though, it would appear to be uh, a false set of circumstances because we would, we're not likely to see intense media buying in the coming months, are we? No, we're not, John, and that's one of the reasons for it. We're not likely to see it in coming months or possibly ever again. <clears throat> and that's why there has been um, uh, so much intensity in all of the, uh, all of the buying and selling because um, most of uh, those who wished to be involved realised that it was a last opportunity and they were taking a strategic decision for, uh, for many years ahead. Are we looking at, therefore, a fairly uh, severe contraction in the share market? I wouldn't say that because there's a lot of money uh, washing around now as a result of um, some of these transactions. But uh, markets are they're historically very, uh, very buoyant and it can't last forever. Uh, there'll be, be some, uh, some reaction at some stage, but that's, of course, the whole secret of any, uh, any share market investment. It's simply timing. It's pretty hard to predict, isn't it? But if I could ask you, could you put a time frame on, on, a, on a contraction and could you tell us in which area of the market do you think it's going to contract? Well, I've already said in respect of New Zealand that 1987 will be a crunch year for many of the, uh, many of the newer companies <coughs> and I think the same applies to, uh, uh, to the Australian market as well. So I see this being a, uh, um, a very interesting year in terms of um, uh, a new set of circumstances um, probably after all the all the media activity dies down. Are we looking at a crash of some sort? I wouldn't say crash, John, but uh, uh, shares don't go up forever. They never have and they never will. While we're talking about the media and the uh, intense share market activity, do you think the buyers of Channels 9 and in Melbourne and Sydney, of the, uh, the Herald Weekly Times and the Melbourne television station HSV, do you think those prices are, are extraordinary too much? Well, they're very, very high prices by my uh, my standards, John, I'm an old conservative, so uh, uh, perhaps I tend to put lower values on them anyway, but they're, they're very, very full prices, and I can only assume, as I said before, that the buyers are looking uh, not just one or two years ahead, but they must be looking decades ahead. Can you look decades ahead in that sense? Well, I sometimes wonder about the practicality of, um, of doing so. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see how those capital values can be justified in terms of uh, performance of the public companies that, uh, that now own them. If you had paid those sorts of figures, could you justify them in your business? Uh, that's a bit of a hypothetical question, John, but um, I feel we'd, we'd be struggling to do so. Let me ask you about your 19% stake in advertising newspapers. Why have you bought in there? Well, I suppose the easy answer, John, is that we bought in because we think it's a good investment, but um, you will recall that we had a substantial investment in uh, Herald and Weekly Times, which arguably uh, may have started, may have been the catalyst um, for all of this activity. Uh, we sold those shares and we purchased advertiser shares. And I think that in all the activity that's taken place, advertiser has been the neglected, uh, neglected company. It's a good, uh, solid, uh, conservative company. And I just simply think it's been uh, been neglected. I think our timing was probably right in that if we hadn't bought 20%, um, I think um, somebody else would have. But as a consequence of our buying, it's really uh, it's really frozen out um, any other potential major shareholders. Do you plan to increase that stake? Well, John, 20% is as far as we can go, so we're almost, uh, we're almost there now. Just to finish up on the media questions, the Fairfax Group, how vulnerable is it to a raider like Homes of Court? I don't think it's vulnerable at all, uh, John. Um, I mean, the facts are well known. It's a, uh, it's a strongly family shareholder oriented company and um, I wouldn't think it's, uh, it's vulnerable at all in that respect. Turning to IEL, with things not looking 
terribly uh, optimistic in this country and, and in New Zealand. Do you see IEL's future more overseas? Well, uh, when you say you're not too optimistic in this country and in New Zealand, I don't know that I'd agree with that because I've said and I still say that um, for us anyway, there are plenty of opportunities in New Zealand and Australia. In our own case, we've expanded overseas simply because we have the, uh, the resources and the people and the experience to do so. It's a natural progression so far as we're concerned and I see our development in Australia and New Zealand taking place um, on an equal basis with our, our overseas activities. You're somewhat at odds with businessmen like John Elliott who says there are greater opportunities for Australian companies and I would take from that New Zealand companies as well, as well overseas. Well there are lots of shades of meaning in, uh, in John's statement whether he, he, he intends there to be. Uh, yes, there are greater opportunities because there's just so much more there, that the companies are just so much larger. So physically, yes, there are greater opportunities, but I doubt if he means, and I certainly don't agree, that um, that means there are no opportunities here, that there are plenty of them. What's going to happen to your local operations if you continue to expand overseas as you are? Uh, I think they give added strength to each other, and I so certainly don't see an Australian or New Zealand company existing simply on overseas expansion. Equally, I think it would be a very restricted view uh, not to look further afield. And I see, as I say, I, th I see without any uh, particular deliberate effort, I just see a natural uh, growth being more or less equally New Zealand, Australia, UK, USA. You say there are plenty of, of opportunities in, in New Zealand and Australia. In what particular areas? Well, we are involved in uh, mergers, um, reconstructions, industry rationalisation. I said before that statistically there are less less opportunities. That doesn't mean to say that you can't make uh, make your own opportunity, and we certainly intend to do so. You've got other projects you're looking at. Definitely, at John. With that in mind, I wonder whether the six billion dollar merger of uh, Briley Investments and IAL, which you called off last year, is going to take place this year. Well, if the, uh, if the conditions were right, it would certainly be a sensible, uh, sensible move. Um, I think it would have certain advantages. On the other hand, if it doesn't take place, they're two, uh, two quite strong companies in their own right. Um, we'll simply carry on as usual. Are you looking at merging those two this year, though? Do you have uh, another... Is there another approach in mind that you have? Well, with the present political and um, tax background, a merger is not a practical proposition. And what I'm saying is that that not only applies to us, but it applies to, uh, to the market generally. And in my